I know there's not much to laugh about, but occasionally he even makes me chuckle, and I wonder <laughs> if he does you. If, if there's anything, I have actually brought you a book <coughs> just published by Canongate by, um, called The Beautiful Poetry of Donald Trump. <laughs> I think you're going to really enjoy this. Um, the picture particularly, it's Donald Trump's head imposed onto Dylan Thomas's body. <laughs> and, uh, and these are poems created uh, with his tweets, with his speeches, with his attacks on you. I think you'll even find there's, there's one about you in here, but I'll leave it to you. Anyway, I did want to <coughs> ask you, that's a present. Uh, I did want to ask you if he has ever made you laugh out loud. I mean, North Korea, bad. Uh, only to keep from crying. <laughs> well, healthcare, complicated. Oh man, I'll tell you, yeah. Healthcare is complicated. I didn't know this job would be so hard. That's my personal favorite. <laughs> is that your favorite? Yeah. Um, just finally, well, if actually, I think, you know what? All I was going to say is, if there's an upside, you're cr clearly an, an incredibly uh, effective campaigner. And in fact, for me, the book really comes alive when you're talking about the actual causes that you're incredibly animated by, rather than the ills and wrongs done to you. And in particular, you were so brave when you went to talk to the coal miners, you know, when you dealt with the whole issue with the poisoned water in Flint, and the work you've done over many, many decades with children and with women. So is there a sense now that you don't have to be political anymore, and you don't have to rein it in, and you can do and say whatever the hell you like, though it probably takes a bit of getting used to, <laughs> um, that you can be even more effective in civil society, mm. and that actually it might not be a bad thing? Well, I, uh, look, I would much rather be in the White House. Um, as, uh, I'd love it. Yes, yeah, be yeah, there. I would. That's just a fact. Um, but I, I am going to do everything I can on behalf of causes and candidates I believe in. So I'm not leaving politics uh, because, you know, in our system, our best chance to rein in uh, the excesses and abuses of this current administration is to take back one or both houses of Congress in 2018. And that's something I hope to help people do. So I, I have a lot to say. I will continue to say it. I'm not going anywhere. I'm not shutting up and sitting down. I, I have to say, you know, when some people in the press started saying that, I, I just did a little Google search, you know? I it's said, dangerous. I said, yes. I said, did they say that to Al Gore or John Kerry or John McCain or Mitt Romney? And the answer, of course, was no. I thought, hmm, there we go again. And I was with the absolutely extraordinary Mary Beard the other day, and she was telling me about this. She said, from the very beginning, as far back as the Greeks, women have been told to shut up. And I said, well, Mary, give me an example. And she goes, in the Odyssey. I said, well, yeah, that's pretty far back. Um, <laughs> She tells a story about how Penelope, you know, is sitting there knitting, holding, literally knitting together the regime of her husband, Odysseus, as he's trying to get back. It took him an awfully long time. And so she is expressing some opinions. And her son, who has now grown to be a teenager, says, shut up, mother. Speech is not for women. I thought that was profoundly interesting and apt.